Good morning, fellow Christians. This is Bill Dubois here at Sam Paul's Bible Ministry, and we're going to be in the book of Jude again. I think we have one more. Uh, when I say one more, I mean we have, I think, ten more, ten more verses to go through, and then we'll be out of the book of Jude, and then we'll be into the next uh, one that Sam pulls out of the air when he talks to the Lord. The Lehman. The Lehman. So. We hope you have your Bibles with you, and if you do, please follow along. And we want to thank you for following us on uh, Facebook and on YouTube. We're getting a lot of reaction to a lot of Sam's uh, studies and his ministry. We want to thank you for that. So with that being said, we're going to start in Jude, verse 50. That will be <laughs> verse 15 in Jude. God bless everybody. <laughs> we'll see you. Bye. Alrighty. Just making sure there, Brother Bill. Uh, Jude 50 would put us in Revelation <laughs> chapter 2. So we're about the middle of Revelation 2. I was looking there when he said, when he when he's lining us up, I was like, well, I can't find it in my Bible. So, well, really you know, I, I have to apologize for that, Sammy, because sometimes I get different books and I know that'll be our I know what Luke. you I think what you were doing because Luke has 59 in it and right. I believe we're going to start in 50 in Luke so right, right. Luke Luke 12 has to be uh, happens to be alone and sometimes y'all forgive us because I think you know what we're talking about I say a lot he says a lot when I mean verse I uh, I should say chapter when I say chapter I mean how many verses are in it and blah blah so anyway we're we're still human we prove that every day, so. We meant that. Anyway, I do. Okay, we are continuing along, and a beautiful uh, middle of August, August the 22nd now. Uh, this will be out on the 25th, so the Lord has been good to us during this month's rain, and still hasn't hit 100 at our house yet. I don't know about yours, but. Well, it depends. See, they take their the readings in the heat, shade. Heat index and the reading in the shade. Yeah. In the shade, so, uh, you know, I have had my, now I have mine in, my temperature gauge is in the sun, and it's been up to 100, 304. Mm -hmm. Well, now, if you have it in the sun, yeah. It well, that's the really what the... <laughs> that's, well, that's, this is true. Yeah, that's not, really not what everybody's the temperature. under the shade, yeah. But right. you're going to say heat index, just say it's 105. Right. You know, come but on. hey, it is August, it's time to be hot, so yeah. yeah. And we're going to be 95 all week. Mm -hmm. No rain till maybe next week. Well, I'm st I still actually need to mow at my house again, so yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. Well, you got a, one of them biggies to roll? You got a zero radius? No, zero it's, it's big John Deere. Oh yeah, big old John Deere lawn tractor. But uh, yeah, See, and, and you yeah, can tell that we're from Texas. Yeah, John Deere. We, we got, got John, John Deere, Deere, and we got bush hogs, and yeah. we got all kinds of That's right. weed whackers. Weed whacker. <laughs> Texas weed whacker. Oh, speaking of Texas, look here, Bill. I think I, get, I just handed you one. I'm kind of thankful for that right there. I got a brand new CD. Yes, out. you do. I got it this week, and uh, the Lord's given me some good Texas tunes to go there. And uh, you're very talented, sir. Anyway, well, thank you. The Lord is blessed, and I, I just uh, I took some pictures of uh, at our house, and, and they're inside there. And the little lady that uh, does my graphic design for me put them all in there where they where they look really good. I just say here here are these pictures, and she does all that design for me. So and then I have them sent over to Dallas, and they put all that together. And I like the I like the cover. Isn't that neat? Yeah, yeah. All righty, Jude, uh, verse 15. We read these last week. I didn't get to go over them a lot, but we, uh, time-wise, I think we'll be able to finish it up today. I'm not sure. I hope. Yeah. Uh, if not, it's been an exciting study. I've learned a lot out of this book, this little little 25 verses. Uh, and it's uh, 14, of course, is talking about Enoch, the seventh man, the seventh generation from Adam there, way over in Genesis. Uh, and then 15, I like this. Now, I wrote in my Bible by this verse, Bill, I said, first on to-do list. Now, this is talking about when the Lord Jesus returns. Okay, we, we've been raptured. We've been taken away. Uh, now, we didn't do a sound check. I guess you were, I guess we're working. Well, we can if you like. I, I think I was thinking the you same thing. You want to do the same? Yeah. Yeah. Pause. Pause. And, no, I can't pause this one, but I can stop it this time again. Uh, I'll keep my left finger up here. Pause. So. Oh, it was the, it was the left hand. I'm sorry. We'll, we'll use mirrors. Alrighty. Yeah, smoking mirrors. Smoking mirrors, yeah. Well, that's the good thing about the Bible. When you study the Bible, you don't have to do that. It's just plain truth. Bill. It's the plain truth. You got that right. Anyway, what we were saying is, uh, 
verse 15 lets us know that after everything is said and done in the end times, the church has been raptured. A few years later, look what happens. On the first, the first thing on the to-do list for the Lord Jesus, if you want to add this to uh, Revelation 19, when he comes back on the, on the great white horse, and I saw the name on his vesture, um, King of kings, Lord of lords. Look what happens, Bill. The first thing here in verse 15 says, to execute, to bring about, to execute judgment upon all and to convince or convict all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and uh, of uh, all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. It, it does all boil down to, and Jude is letting us know that, before, uh, actually along about the same time, John's writing here in the, uh, in the Revelation, about what is really going on in the church at his time, what is going on throughout the centuries, what is going on today in our society, and what is going to be going on throughout the uh, Revelation in which John tells us about the... Uh, the judgments that are going on on earth, what is all this about? It boils down to one person, Bill Dubois, class. It boils down to Christ Jesus. Jesus, the Lord, the Son of God. Notice verse 15. I've said it. I've quoted it a lot of times. We've turned to it. But let me read it one more time for those of you who, don't, who haven't heard this yet. To execute judgment upon all. Now listen to these words here. I'll get Bill to read his. And to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches. Do we hear that today, Bill? Do we hear that today oh, on the news? Oh, my goodness, yes. Uh, just talking to con in conversation, whatever else. If you, if you have a little cross on your lapel, or you, if you say uh, the Lord Jesus on your tie, or uh, if, you're, if you're wearing any kind of a Christian uh, uh, emblem of whatever else, or you're carrying your Bible around, whatever else, people automatically have what, what is called a hard speech right. symptom, a hard speech mentality about this word. Uh, just automatically. Now, I'm not saying everybody does. I'm just saying, the, 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 but the world is full of this. And this is what the Lord Jesus is going to come back to correct. Read your 15, if you would. Sure thing. My 15 says, to execute judgment on the people of the world. He will convict every person of all the ungodly things they have done and for all the insults that ungodly sinners have spoken against him. That just shows a lot of ungodly yes, sinners. Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, well, there's, there's four of mine. But notice, notice the ending there, the hard speech, the ungodly things they've said against him. They've spoken against him. It boils down to what have you done? What have, notice you said world. Right. It didn't say the family of God. It didn't say his children. It didn't say the ones he loves. It said the world. There's a difference there, folks. I'm going to say it one more time. There are different kind of people in the Bible. There's right. two different kind of people in the world today. Believers his, and non-believers. There you go. Saved and unsaved. Christians and non-Christians. True Christians and, and non-Christians. Notice how it means how to say ungodly. Who is he talking to there? The ungodly. The unsaved. The unloved. Okay? Amen. But the thing is, Bill, their speech, their lifestyle, their deeds, their motives, their actions, anything and everything that they that the that these people, the ungodly people, have could muster up on this earth, but between, but between their birth and the time this happens, has been ungodly. Yeah. And he is coming back and your says convict convict. They're they're already Guilty. They're already guilty. Right? So he's, he's doing the conviction. Notice 16 says, These are murmurers and complainers, walking after their own lust and their own mouth, speaketh great swelling words. Oh, they're, they're, they're just braggarts. They're boastful. They are, look what I've done. They're, they're, they're patting themselves on the back. Uh, great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Well, Oh, hey, buddy, you're looking good today. How, man, you, you look all right. You did, you did a good job. Pat you on the back. Blah, blah, blah. What's my motive? What can I get from you? Right. That's my motive. I'm not, I'm not complimenting you. Right. I'm wanting something from you. This is right. what this is. Now, remember, Jude, we're in right. Jude here. So focus, keep our focus on um, the, the, the direct 
the directiveness of this letter is to the believing people of beware of people that have slithered into your church and are doing the, these things. Um, being a leader, as I have been in the past, through the military mm -hmm. and through also uh, working at my company that I worked with, in those classes and teaching, the main thing that they're, they're trying to imp impress on you mm -hmm. is find out what motivates your workers. Mm -hmm. It could be a day off. Mm -hmm. It could be uh, a bonus. It mm -hmm. could be whatever that case may be. So in reality, my, uns my, my selfishness mm -hmm. is to get you to do what I want you right. to do as a, in a business aspect. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, well, if I do this, Bill's going to reward me mm -hmm. with that. So, you know, and that's what I did mm -hmm. in the service. I mean, you want to go home early tonight? Mm -hmm. Get the job done. There you go. You know, it's not like I'm trying to take advantage of you monetarily, mm -hmm. money-wise. My job is to get you to do your job so I don't get my butt well, up. But doesn't that work in the business world of, uh, oh, sure. of a motivation of a... Uh, Oh my goodness, I can think of even, even Dragnet, old uh, Harry Morgan and, and Jack Webb. It was 5 o'clock Friday, and, and old uh, Gannon turned all of his paperwork in, he'd done a good job and everything else. And so Friday says, all right, I'll see you Monday. And he said, are you forgetting one thing? What's that? Well, you're my, you're my superior in this, you know, he was Sergeant Joe Friday. He said, yeah, what am I forgetting? He said, well, you're supposed to tell me that I've done a good job this week. That way I'll come back Monday. You know, that, that works. Yeah. But see, that was for the right reason. Right. Uh, and and right. Jude here is saying, hey, there are some people out there that will pat you on the back and shake your hand and look you in the eye and say, hey, man, you know, you're my brother. You're my sister in the Lord Jesus Christ. Good job. And that's a good thing. We should encourage each right. other. He here is saying, watch out for those people that are doing that to get something from you. And that goes back into the house Something of God. that's going to benefit them probably monetarily. Right. Wrong rather than, Absolutely. Rather than... Um, Power and money. Right. Power and money. That's what they're wanting to get. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, that, the reference there that I have is... Remember, you know how some people just kind of bellyache and grumble and, and kind of grumble under, under their breath? You know, you can oh, yeah. once in a while hear a word, but they they just walk around. And, you know, like that right there? Look what James 2 says. James chapter 2 says, My brethren... Have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect to persons? For if there come unto you, uh, your assembly, a man with a gold ring and goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect unto him that weareth the gay clothing, and say unto them, uh, fancy, uh, clothing, and say unto them, sit thou here in a good place, and you say to the other one, sit there in my footstool, or stand there. Uh, are ye not them partial in yourselves and have become judges of evil thoughts? Well, that's what Jude is bringing out here too, going, wait a minute, what is the motive behind this person either in the classroom or in the hallway or just sitting by me in the pew or from the pulpit and them looking at me and having that smile on their face and just telling everybody everything's okay and love, love, love and oh, I love you, God loves you, we're all okay and stuff like that. What's the motive behind that? Now, is anything that I just said right, Bill? Is, it, should, a, should a person get behind the pulpit and tell their congregation that everything's okay, God loves you, and I love you, and everything's okay, oh, pass the plate? No. No. <clears throat> Preach the Word. No. Preach the Word. Yeah. Preach the Word. You, you, yeah. you need to, you need, based on what what you read and, and your inner feeling, mm -hmm. you need to make that decision on yourself. Let, let me just throw one more out. I, 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 we've been on this subject for quite a while. Seven weeks now. Let, let me just throw one more out. I, you know how I, I read the Bible, I keep reading the Bible, and I go through my own personal studies. Right now I'm in Proverbs, which is a wonderful uh, readings out of, the, out of the Word of God. Psalms and Proverbs, both uh, for uplifting uh, or for shock sometimes. Well, let me just read you something out of Psalm that I read yesterday. And I just want to get your opinion on it. And then what? I'm just going to read it and then say, then what do we do? What do we do with that verse? If that's in the Bible like that, what, what do we do with it? Now, this is a prayer of, a, of, a, of a, David, the King David, a believing heart. What the believing heart says, Psalm 139, just 24 verses. I'm going to read, the, I'm gonna read um, Psalm 139, for, uh, starting with verse 20. And I'm just going to read them, and then we're going to go back to Jude, and I'm going to ask you what, what, do you do with, what do you do with those verses? Psalm 139, verse 20. For they speak against thee wickedly, 
and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am I not grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with a perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Hmm. Not, not, not even going to call me it. Just going to go back to Jude. But, but what do you do? What do you do with those verses? Anyway, uh, now we're going to shift gears here. We've gone from all of what's going on, and, and a recap, because we're just about to end here, uh, of Jude is urging these people to hey, get in there, put both arms around what you have, put both arms around the Lord Jesus spiritually, your faith, and grab a hold of what is true and keep it. So we've gone through the, the greeting, then why he's changed the writing of the letter because of these uh, certainly crept in unawares, these uh, slithering in, Worms, <laughs> slithering, worms. slithering worms, slithering church worms. <laughs> it's sad to have to say that, Bill, but hey, we've been told that. I know. We've been told that. So yeah. then you got it, the backsliding Israel um, and the angels, that group of angels, Sodom and Gomorrah, the surrounding areas. Then you had Cain, Balaam, and Kor. Now then you've got these people that, that just, they're like the waves of the sea washing up and that foam that's the mass to nothing and then it's washed back out, the wandering stars. And then these grumblers. Uh, and what Enoch told uh, the, the seventh already way over the Bible, way over in God's word, in the near the beginning about what's going to be going on. Now then, let's let's end on a positive note here on seventeen. Read your seventeen and eighteen, if you would. Jude seventeen and eighteen. Jude seventeen and eighteen. But you, my dear friends, must remember what the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ said. They told you that. In the last times there would be scoffers whose purpose in life is to satisfy their ungodly desires. 19? Continue on with 19? Uh, no, let me, let me stop right there for just a minute. Uh, do you believe, Bill, it's rather obvious, but I'll just put it in a question. Do you believe that there is like a sifting process? The Holy, Holy Father, is, is, he's got kind of a sifting process. I remember my mom years ago, year, yep, yep. 45, 50 years ago, 45 years ago, I can remember being in the kitchen with her, and, and she'd put her apron on, and she was going to make something. Well, she made it from what we call scratch. Amen. She my made mother it. used to do the same thing. Well, she had this little uh, aluminum-type sifter, yep. and it had wi a wire bowl in it and a handle and a little black knob over here on the side, and it went inside to four or five wheels and she would pour something in there usually flour or grain or whatever else and do like that right there over what she was going to do that was sifting she was sifting well what was she doing she was separating what she wanted out from what she didn't want that's a sifting process this is what jude is saying here and, and, and if you get if that, if that makes you go boing i can get it now that's how i have to think of things what, what does he mean by sifting well, if you want to, uh, let, let, I've, I've got some verses here. Isaiah 30, 28 says, sift, he's going to sift the nations. Isaiah 30, 28, I will sift the nations. Amos 9, 9 says, sift the house of Israel, and I'm going to get rid of the rebellious and keep what's his. He has promised that already. Isaiah 30, 28, Amos 9, 9, and then Luke 22 uh, 31 and 32, uh, he's talking, Jesus is talking to Peter, Simon Peter, and he says, Jesus, uh, Jesus I'm, I am praying for you. I myself am praying for you because why? The enemy, the true enemy, he's wanting to sift you. Okay? We've yeah. been told yeah. this throughout God's word, Old Testament, New Testament, yeah. here both. We need to keep and hold true, hold in ourselves and right. understand, Bill, between our ears and in our heart, what our faith means right. what we are holding on to and when you talk about sifting our enemies are sifting us you it's it's what you are looking for you want to separate the good for your bad mm -hmm. and the other way around is we want to sift out the bad mm -hmm. and keep the good yeah so yeah it, it's a two-way street there if it, it depends on what your motivation is well just like just like king david there at the end of uh, psalm 139 he actually prayed that after he after he told 
God, uh, hey, I, I recognize you have enemies, and I hate them. I hate them with a perfect hate for because they hate my God. But what does he end with? He ends with a personal prayer going, hey, Lord, look down on me. Judge me. If there's any wicked in me, get sifted out of there. Get, get that out of me. Okay? So that's what we need to do today. You, do we say that sometimes instead of asking God for this and this and this mm -hmm. that we sometimes don't even need, how about just thank you, God, have mercy on me today, and get get out the 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 leaven that's in me to take out anything that's in me today. How about why don't we do that sometimes? You know, instead of just give me, give me. God's not Santa Claus. This is what Jude is saying here. He says, look, beloved. But behold, but the word but means it's a, it's a subject change. Beloved, remember, hey, he's going, hey, hold on a minute, exclamation point. Hey, hold on just a minute. Remember this. Remember the words which we were spoken about who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? It's kind of like when, when, you, when the judge brings down a verdict, you'll say, well, this is right, this is right, this is right, this is right. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. But... Mm -hmm. You're going to jail. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Sure, sure you, the, the, uh, something has still been broken. Right. Some law has been broken, and somebody's got to pay the penalty for it. And right. you look like you're the guilty one. So that's exactly right. And I like the word judge there. We need to remember that this 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 one this uh, this one here in fifteen, not a lot of love going on there. Oh no, no, mm. no, no, no. We're talking about the mm. holy, holy, holy righteous, completely yeah. pure and white, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, right. the Holy One of Israel, the Ancient of Days, coming to execute judgment. Yeah, you know, he's saying yeah. that he's going to execute judgment on the world. Mm -hmm. So that, in this particular case, is everybody. That's right. Is all. That's right. Why? Because where's the church? We're being raptured. We're being raptured. Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure enough. Folks I think you should do that right now, to be honest with you. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm watching the clock right now. It's 917 here. I'm, uh, we might make it to 920. I don't know. Let's finish some verses and see. Yeah, I mean, if not, we'll finish them in our new frock. Amen. Preaching to the preachers, right? Hey. Verse 19. <laughs> These be they also, uh, the, 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 he's going back in. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit. Notice again. How well built in these verses that we've brought out here lately, and the Lord just really shines this down on us, and you and I, it's clicked on both of us. Read this verse and then the next verse. And this verse is talking about one group of people, the next verse is talking about it. even gets down to sometimes in the same verse. Have you right. noticed that? Right. He just said, and he finished 16 about the grumblers and murmurs and, and the, the, the bad dudes, the ungodly ones. Then he went, but... Well, that means change. Notice that in your Bible. When you read your Bible, notice these words. They're in there for a reason. It's just like in, in John 3.16. Everybody, everybody knows 3.16, but what does 3.17 say? 3, 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 19, 20 absolutely. say? You know? absolutely. He's telling you, this is what you what is required, mm -hmm. but then the other chapters are telling you how to do it. Mm -hmm. for, those of you, for, for those of you out there in, in, in video land, if you, if you do watch a game, any kind of a sports game, and, and your team or the opposing team is getting down to the, to the nitty-gritty on the other end and they're just about to make some sort of a goal or a score. If you'll notice in the background, you'll see somebody hold up a big poster board that says John 3.16 yeah. a lot of times, if they still allow them at the games. I don't know if they do or not. Yeah. I wish the person sitting next to that person would hold up John 3.19, John 3.20, yeah. uh, Jude 15. Yeah, same God, same God. Am, am I trying to dismiss John three sixteen? Absolutely, Absolutely not. not. If if it wasn't for John three sixteen, you and, you I, and wouldn't I wouldn't be, be here. Wouldn't be I mean, we, we wouldn't be safe. We'd have no chance. Right. That's not what I'm saying. Just don't get. Just don't put a big period at the end of John three sixteen. There's some. There's some verbiages after that. There's some words after that. Okay. Yeah. 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 But ask someone to quote. Stay tuned to uh, what, Luke, uh, what uh, is going to be in Luke. Luke, Luke yeah. 15, when we get there, the, the, the topic of that is called Jesus the Divider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, then uh, verse uh, 20 says, But ye, there again, it's switched again, but these are they that separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. Well, who are they? These are uh, they're church splitters. These are people that try to come in and split 
believers. They come in and do things and say things and act out differently than what the Bible says. They get a group of people going with them, and they try to split the church. That's what, that's what these people are. But ye, beloved, again, verse 20, 17, and then 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most, high, uh, most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Ephesians 6, 17 and 18 says that. Romans um, 8 says that also. Uh, how are we to pray? We are to pray. Bill, uh, this, is, this is an interesting little verse right there. Let me see if I wrote any notes on it. When you said uh, Ephesians 6, 7, 8, you're talking chapters, right? Uh, Ephesians 6, verses... Uh, 7 and 8. 17 and 18. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Let me see here. Build up again. Build up your lives as the holy, uh, of, of the holy faith God gave you. Remember, God gives us the initial faith to have faith. I didn't wake up one morning and go, right. oh, I, me and God are best friends. That's not the way it works. Study the word, all of the word. There are 66 books in the Bible, not just John 3.16. There again, Amen. I said. Mm -hmm. uh, they, and they all fit. 2 Timothy 2.15 and Proverbs 29.18. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.15, that would say what? Um, Study the show that I self approved. That's what that one would say. Proverbs 29, 18, it says, uh, uh, because of there's, there's no vision, there's no vision in the land, there's no vision in these people. That, that's, there, there's a negative uh, area going on there. And then um, Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Well, who wants to be destroyed? I don't want to be destroyed. I want to understand. It's as simple sometimes as opening your Bible letting the Lord flip the pages to where he wants you to read. If you don't understand it, flip over whichever way to, to James, and James tells you if you lack understanding, he will give you understanding. So say a little prayer. Go, Lord, I'm a, this is your word. It's open up to me. It's alive. It's living. Show me what I need. If it's one verse or one chapter or three books that the Lord wants you to read that day, you will understand it better. You'll have a better understanding of the word of God. My right. people perish. My people are dying. My people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge of this Bible. And we don't have to. Okay? Um, I even wrote on there, if you reject him, God will reject you. And to pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, uh, the word there is pneuma in the Greek, P-N-E-U-M-A, Romans 8.26, and, uh, oh, I, I know why I wrote Ephesians uh, 6, 17, 18, it's the sword. Romans That's, 8, 26. Yeah. Uh, you, I think you have uh, Romans 6, 17 and 18. Excuse me, Romans 8, 26 and Ephesians 6, 17 and 18. Why right. I said that? Well, let's turn there. Ephesians 6, 17 and 18 to get it right. What does, uh, when we're putting on the armor, what is the armor that we have as a weapon? That would be the sword. Yep. So be Romans, the sword. that would be the sword. That's the word of God. S-W-O-R-D. Take the S off. W-O-R-D. Hmm? Mm hmm Um... Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, also helpeth our infirmities, our weaknesses in whatever we have weaknesses in. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. In that wonderful bill that, that holy God, our Father in heaven, realizes how weak we are in this flesh and sometimes in our little minds, my little pea brain, my little walnut as I like to call it, I don't even know what to say, but the Holy Spirit understands my infirmities. It just said there in, in Romans 8, 26. Mm -hmm. He can take what I say that in my weakness might not even get past the ceiling of this room or my house or past the roof of my mouth even because of my weaknesses. But he can take what's really in my heart by desire to please him. He can take that and take my little moanings and groanings and utter them into groanings I don't understand into Holy Father's ears. Right, that's now what, that's, that's marvelous. Says too. That, that's, just, that's, just a, that's just an awesome thought to know mm -hmm. that as a believer, as a child of God, sometimes all I can say, all I can do is, is I'm, 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 I'm looking down at the ground sucking dirt. Uh, all I can say is Jesus. Lord Jesus. And, and he can take the rest of that and put it in the Holy Father's ears. And he lifts me up. Right. Uh, have you ever been down that low? Oh, you yeah. Get down that low. Oh, yeah. Think but about see, that. The most important part is the Holy Spirit recognizes that you need that. Absolutely. That extra 
I don't want to use the word shove, but that extra B12 grace. B12 shot, yeah, yeah. extra grace, that's the extra, extra grace. Extra grace is to, to, well, to get you through that day. That's and, right. and you may not be able to express yourself with words, mm -hmm. but your emotions will express it to him. Sometimes you got to cry. Sometimes you got to cry a lot. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes you got to cry out to the Lord. Absolutely. Yeah. Heavenly Father, what yep. have I done to help, help me, Lord, yeah. <laughs> Take the target off me. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, let's see here. What did I say? Ephesians 6. Yeah, uh, uh, Ephesians 17. And 17 take the, and 18. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword. Uh, boy, isn't it nice to have the helmet of salvation, something on your head yeah. that you know that you're saved. In between your ears and your thought pattern, yeah. you know you're saved. So you can also do the rest. You can take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit. There it is again. And watching there unto with all uh, pers uh, perseverance and supplication for all saints. Be persistent. Be Boy, persistent in your prayers. We you know, Sam, when you talk about the armor of God, like you say, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the word of God. Yeah. Word of God. Each piece of armor that you are wearing is represented by what He wants you to do in regards Shield to your faith. Yeah. Your, your faith. It, yeah. And in the and of course you got the girdle mm -hmm. and and all this other stuff. It's, but it's designed. The 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 parable, if you want to use that term, is designed to say, this is what you have mm -hmm. to do to defend me. Right. And so I'm giving you the equipment you yeah. need. You already you have just, it. You just do it. You just do it. Yeah. You go out and just do what you got to do. You notice that too. There's a there's a great thought process of I I need to put this on. I yeah. I need to. It's there. It's there. And I need to actually put this on. I need to know in my mind. How can I know in my mind? Pray and look to God's word. How can I fight in a battle? We'll get out there and put put your armor on have armor on because why we are soldiers we're in the army of God right shield of faith right. first of all I've got to have it across my heart right okay and remember I think we mentioned last week there's nothing to hide there's nothing on the back side. hide the little Christian buttocks back there it's all on the front we're leaning into right. the battle you can't you can't face uh, Satan and his men min, and his minions. minions without armor right because it's you against many that's right because they are all over the place, Absolutely. and they surround you. Absolutely, sure enough. But yeah. the Lord, but the uh, but the interesting the thing is, provide. you just got to believe. But the Holy Spirit's inside, and the, mm -hmm. and a child of God cannot be indwelt by an evil spirit. Right. Oh, I love this next one here. Look at this verse. It says twenty one. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some. Let me stop right there. Uh, you notice that the, the, the love that he talks about, like John 3, 16, that's for the church. This love here that he's talking about is the, the everlasting, unconditional love that God has for his beloved, for his church. We just read it there twice. 17, beloved. 18, uh, 20, beloved. It just says that. Who, who does that? So keep yourselves in the love of God. For beloved, he starts off. 3, Two, uh, verse 2 says mercy, and then verse 3, beloved. 17, beloved. 20, beloved. Who is that? That's you immediately. This is the yeah. church that he's yeah. on there. Yeah. Jude uh, is, is, is writing directly to it, us today. The New Testament, Jesus Christ saved us. God the Father has called us out. The Holy Spirit has indwelt us. We have put on the armor of God. We're in this battle, and we know what to be looking for. Also, Notice, Bill, that this armor that we've referenced here over in Romans with the Spirit and Ephesians with the armor, how, why do we need that inside the church? It's because, oh. it's because Acts has already told us. Paul writes to, to us in Acts yeah. of, hey, be careful because there's some people out there that really want to come get you and twist you and turn you off from what's going on in, the new, in this way. There's a new king in time and his name is Jesus. The next verse says... Also, be weary of the brethren of the so-called, the, the people, the fellow members that are inside that would twist and turn everything right. else. This is who Judas is referring to. It's kind of like the fox in the hen house. Absolutely. And there are, there are many of them. There are many false prophets. Amen. We already did studies on mm -hmm. that. And I think we mentioned that false prophets in almost every study that we did. Mm -hmm. They're out there, folks. We're, all, we're just a yeah. warning sign. Yeah. Uh, look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mercy to save Mercy to keep, mercy to rapture. How about that? 
He, the, God has mercy. We're saved through his grace. The, the unmerited favor that he has poured out to us, uh, mercy on our souls, uh, the believer's souls. So it's mercy to save, mercy to keep. Uh, sometimes that mercy to keep, you reckon sometimes some of his kids makes him want to just go, you know, well, where's my fly swat? I got to get up. Where's my paddle? I got to get a hold of him. But he still has mercy on us. Yeah. And also, Hebrews tells us that whom the Lord loves, he chastens, he spanks. He spanks his own. Yeah, whom the Lord loves. Yeah. When you say whom, hmm? it means some. Some. That's right. You plus, it's, plus it's better English. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, have we got to 23 yet? Uh, read 22 and 23. That's, that's I love interesting. 23, man. Yeah. It goes, 22 is, and you must show mercy to those whose faith is wavering. Rescue others by snatching them from the flames of judgment. Mm -hmm. Show mercy <clears throat> to still others. But, here's the but again, do so with great caution. Then you got a comma, hating the sins that contaminated their lives. Right, sure. In, in other words, the Lord Jesus came down. Uh, while I'm saying this, if you want to turn over to get where this comes from, to get a good juicy portion of it. Uh -huh. Turn way back over in the middle of your Bible, Bible to Amos. Good old Amos. A good old Amos. We've said him a few times here, uh, some verses. Amos chapter 4 and verse 11, and then right over to you, right a few pages to Zechariah 3, 2. But go to Amos 4, 11. You just read a very interesting passage there. And some have a compassion on making a difference. Okay. Some, uh, some people are in doubt. Some people that are in church are in doubt. Mm -hmm. Verse 23 goes on a little deeper. It says, others say with fear, holding that. Now, folks, I want you to understand. I rely on that verse here as a summarization of what things that have come out of my mouth here for the last six or seven weeks, if you've been keeping up with these studies, and you have gone, oh, that sound, he's just getting really harsh. And so, no, this verse, this verse sums up what I have been teaching about. Doesn't God love everybody? Who does God love? Who do we love? Who are we commanded to love? This verse sums that up and it says, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. I am not told to get down and get down in the nitty gritty with people and get down and to witness to somebody that's on drugs, I gotta start taking drugs. And to witness to somebody that's uh, fooling around, I gotta start fooling around and messing around. To, to get down to somebody that's a drunkard, I gotta start being a drunk and hanging out with them and getting splashed on Friday nights. That's not what that says. That says get in their faces and rebuke them to the point of, look, buddy, you have, you've got, you're standing on the on the fence right now. You're standing on a on a very fine line, Crazy. and you're not in good shape spiritually at all or physically or mentally or, or emotionally and plus you got one foot over here dabbling on top of hell and the other foot's on a banana peel here's what you need you need some truth what does amos 4 11 say amos 4 11 says i will destroy some of your cities as i destroyed sodom and gomorrah those of you who survived were like charred sticks pulled from a fire but still, you will not return to me, says the Lord. Notice, though, the ones that did survive, that he has pulled out, this remnant that he's pulled out from Egypt, from, time, from uh, Israel from time to time, he pulled them all out from Egypt, but that he has had mercy on, they were like charred pieces of charcoal or sticks of fire. They, they were on fire, the brand fires. Mm -hmm. This is what Amos says in Zechariah 3, uh, 3 2 also talks about the dire situation that some souls were in that God in his what? Mercy looks down on and says that one there on the earth right now that one's the closest to going to hell at this moment. In fact if, if I give them three more breaths they're going to go ahead and go to hell. I'm going to reach down on mercy and save them. That's how awesome God is. That's how awesome his mercy is. That's what Zechariah 3 2 says. Zechariah 3 2 says, and the Lord said to Satan I, the Lord, reject your accusations, Satan. Yes, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebukes you. You said that last week. Got in his face. That's right. That's what that, mean, that's, what, that's what that means. We have the authority to say that. This is what Michael said 
to Lucifer, to 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 the devil, to Satan, right. dealing with Moses. He right. said, "I'm not going to have. I'm not going to bring about any railing accusations. Why? I'm going to let the Lord handle you." Amen. Yeah. This is what we do. This is what the mercy. Notice the word. This is the uh, umbrella under here. Under this word here of mercy. That mercy. He has compassion. He say we've read it in Exodus and we've read it in Romans. I have mercy on whom I have mercy on. Can the Lord save anybody? Apparently oh, yeah. so. Oh, yeah. Apparently so. He's, did he save you? Then put yourself in that category. Can he save me? Apparently so. He saved me. He saved Bill. Okay. If he can save us, folks, he can save whom he chooses. It is his choice. But look at what Jude is saying here. Get you, want me in. To, you want me to finish the rest of that oh, verse? Yeah, sure. Okay. And the, the remaining verse is, This man is like a burning stick mm -hmm. that has been snatched from the fire. And the reason I want to end it, because it, it's the same Basically. Yeah, it's, it's from Amos, and what he's saying here, you're, it's a firebrand, you're already, right. you're already, uh, you are, are, you're down here, you're in the fire already, you got your finger in I your hand, snatched you and out. you snatched you out of the fire. Which should give you an indication that I need you as my father, because you are my children. I'm I'm you, I don't I'm know how many more times yeah. I'm going to snatch you I'm, out of I'm that fire. You, I'm letting you now know that you're mine. But yeah. this is how some people, yeah. I don't want to get that close. I, I don't want to have gotten that close. Yeah. To, to being destroyed. Yeah. But some people are. Mm -hmm. So Jude is warning them, hey, don't let these people get in, twist your minds, twist your mind. Hold, what was the previous verses? Hold on to what is true. What is the truth? 17, which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Don't just keep going down that path, Bill, of la, 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 everything's okay. God loves me because somebody told me years ago that God loved me. John, John 3 something, I don't know who John is. Anyway, he said so he said it 316 times, I guess. I don't know. God loves you. So, but the, hey, that's that's the one a lot of people. I'm sorry, say. but that's but the laugh at it because it's laughable. It, it's laughable because we know it's, better. It's As laughable, believers, but, we know better. But that's what a lot of people think. I know. Who is John, and why did he send me 316 times? Sometimes they get confused with John the Apostle and John the Baptist. You know, two different people, right? One of them was beheaded because of a little girl danced, and and her mama said, hated, you, hated, her. I, I, yeah. hated hated John the Baptist. Why? Because he told the truth about her lifestyle. And the king liked John the Baptist. Absolutely. But he still had to follow what her. What, a, what an idiot king. Yeah, he should have said, Nah. But you know, it's all part of. I'll give you up to it's half all of part my of the scheme of things. No, I don't want to have your kingdom. I just want all the head of John the Baptist. Well, a good man died that day because a woman got mad. But mm -hmm. it was it was meant to be. It was meant to be though. Right. Okay, I'm all over the place now. We'll be back in June. Okay. Uh, 24. Now unto him that is able, look here, able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Oh, that's a good verse. Mm -hmm. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Mm-mm-mm. God can save who he wants. And look, look at the mercy that he has on us today. Mm -hmm. Now him that is able to keep you from falling. Well, I pray that in my life. I pray, Lord, don't let me get into that 23 and 24 category. I don't want to start doubting. I don't want to, I don't want to live my Christian life, quote unquote, my churchy life. Um, like, I, well, I went to church on Sunday and everything's okay. I read, a few, I read, I read John 3, 16, 16 times, you know, and then go out and have my life on a banana peel thinking that everything's okay. I, I as a as a believer, uh, and I'm relatively new at this, in five years, but, and I'll honestly, Sam, I have no doubt. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, the the Lord has sealed, seared, sealed, and seared that for you. He sure has. You know? I have no doubt that. And I'm you, saved. you were baptized yep. relatively soon afterwards. I remember that. Mm -hmm. And th then you started getting in your work. You actually opened up your Bible after 67 years of someone telling you, I I'll, let me just tell you what to say. I'll, I'll say. These are these people that he's talking about here. Mm -hmm. These these people here, you've experienced that in your in the churches. In, 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 yeah, and, and I just want to say one thing. It's never too late. Apparently not. But I'm getting at is, I mean, I mean, what I'm saying is, as long as we're still on this earth, mm -hmm. it's not too late. But then if it's too late, if you wait and something happens, mm -hmm. and you die. And, well, and plus we've read, too, that God, in 1 Second or John, God can take you if you're not glorifying his kingdom. If you're being a mar on his kingdom, even though you're in his family, and you're being a wayward child, and he's tapped you on the shoulder, and you've been in the hospital, or you know, whatever, and you continue to uh, 
not do his will, he can he can take you. Yep, we know that. Luke 12 says, fear him who can, after he's killed your body, take your soul. I, so, I, I still can't I still can't help think about that that guy over in the Harrison house. You know, I really can't. I cannot. You know, he was serious. And, and that is fr that is fresh in my mind. Yep. At today, as it was the day that he defied God. What was it? I he see. He did one of those fifteen. I didn't take the. I in a way I did because we were there. We were trying to minister. We we took the day off and did that. Yeah. You know. And for him to, to say that, and th that wasn't the first time. We talked to him, what, three? Three or four different times. Time. Come in, come in, come in. Hey. Come on in. Three or four different times, yeah. And we're just wrapping up with you. And so, yeah. Um, anyway, that, that, that's what he's talking about there. He I, That is spoken of against him. That's who that was talking about, sure enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, any questions on that? We made through Jude. Hey, it only took us, what, three weeks? To three do weeks to 25 go verses, so yep. yeah. Sure. Very good. All right, thank you, folks. How's Marshall? Good, how are y'all? Doing all